Tempers and pressures are good, airspeed's alive. There's 60, up we go. Oh, she's sprite like today. Hello there, you join me in the Scottish Aviation Bulldog. Just after the takeoff roll, we're in the initial climb out. We're looking for about 80 knots there, and then we're into the climb at AC. Flying the Bulldog today with just myself on board, and um, we've got about 14 gallons of fuel on board, so it's very, very light. We've got a ni really nice climb right. Looking over my shoulder there, you can see two Dreamliners on Apron Bravo at Prestwick. They're in at Prestwick getting some maintenance done on their engines. Well, uh, getting them swapped out. Now, as I just dusted the squelch there on the intercom, the, the initial plan was to... Yes, so the initial plan was to go south out of the zone and uh, have a little aerobatics practice, but as you can see from the clouds out there, the, the horizon just really was quite murky, so it, um, it wasn't really worth putting the aircraft on its back. In fact, it was a lot worse than I thought it would be. But here's a couple of steep turns in quick succession, maybe about 45 degrees there. This is when I really decided, yep, yeah, I'm not really going to have much fun out to the south here, so let's go back to Presswick for some circuits. see a few water droplets on the canopy. There we have a beautiful ray of sunshine coming out from between the between the showers. There was some quite quite nasty showers around, but some big gaps of blue in the sky this day as well. So so I, I thought I'd be lucky and uh, get a nice big gap and get some aer arrows in, but um, it didn't pan out that way. So now we're off back to the circuit. You can see there that the glare shield is removed. That's because there was some planning uh, work going on for the avionics refit, which is happening shortly. Quite exciting stuff. ADSB and a, and a Garmin system installed soon. Yeah, so now we have me turning on to final here. Slowing the aircraft up, we've got the first stage of flaps down. Flaps enter. So with flaps enter, we um, we can pretty much fly a standard approach uh, glide slope, but when we go to full flap in the Bulldog, you get a lot of drag, a lot of drag. So it slows you right up, and as a consequence, you either have to add power or steepen your descent. And so, so this can be quite useful. But it, but it is quite a steep approach with full flap and the Bulldog.
There we go, a little bit float. I think that was caused by... I did, just didn't bring the, the power back to idle quick enough. There we go. And there's the nose wheel down. Lap selected to enter quickly, and then the power gradually raised back up. 60 knots very quickly, and off to ground. I'm getting a very impressive climb rate with just me on board. Um, I believe I spotted 1700 feet a minute here on the vertical speed indicator, during the initial climb out anyway. Yes, there we go, just popping up to there. Of course I couldn't sustain this. Up to cruise altitude. Now, a very annoying habit that I've noticed from the videos here is that as soon as I'm into the climb, at least for the, ne for, for the initial climb, I move my hand back to the trim wheel, where it should be covering the throttle, except for momentary periods when I'm adjusting trim. I seem to rest my hand on the trim wheel, which is a, which is a very bad habit during the climb in case the throttle creeps back. So, um, so, so, so that's that's worthwhile. That's why you record cockpit footage is to notice little little niggles and try and work them out in your next flight. We do tend to fly the circuits of press it quite wide. It's a th well, near enough three kilometer long runway, so so they are big circuits compared to uh, the sort of airfields you're usually flying a bulldog or general aviation aircraft from. Of course, uh, big square circuits as well. When a bulldog is primarily uh, flown in military airfields with oval circuits, to 800 feet. So this is a very very big wide circuit for a bulldog. Uh, you have got the perpendicular runway at Presswick as well, so you've, you've always got good uh, glide uh, if you were to have an engine out. It's coming on to base, slowing the aircraft up. Pulling the power back, raising the nose. Once the speed's below 125, we can take the flap center. I can see the flaps have moved. Now on this particular day, I was overestimating the uh, how the the crosswind component would affect me on my turn to final here. I think I do get it a bit better on the very last one. Yep, so we brought the engine back quicker this time. A little less float. There's the nose wheel down. Lap center and applying the power gradually. Up we go.
and this time we do quite a quick cut to turning final, just to save some time in the video. Here we are turning final again on the last one. I am enjoying myself, I swear, despite the uh, the look on my face of intense concentration. So don't quite get the stall worn on this one, but it's a relatively smooth landing nonetheless. There's a the nose wheel. Down. We can hear the uh, the runway lights making the noise on the nose wheel. One of the disadvantages of being such a large airfield is there's a lot of taxiing to do. So shutting the Bulldog down now, the mixture goes to cut off, followed shortly by the Magnetos off and Battery Master. And now the part I find hardest about flying the Bulldog, which is putting it away in the hangar. It's a very heavy aircraft for a, for a two-person machine, and so it takes, takes a bit of effort. There we are, now the aircraft's tucked away. Thanks for watching.